This is video number two in our series about creating dailies in DaVinci Resolve for Avid Media Composer. Step two, creating and managing export timelines in Resolve. So in my previous video, I showed how to bring your footage from a hard drive or from a camera card into DaVinci Resolve and make sure that it was organized properly in your media pool, including creating real names for all of your clips. So in this second video, we're going to create and manage the export timelines in Resolve in order to prepare to export this footage for Avid Media Composer. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to the second tab in Resolve. It's the Edit tab. And this is where we can create and manage sequences or timelines. So on the left, you can see my media pool. I've imported all of the footage from the first day of filming and I've got three video cards worth of stuff. And if I click into each card, I can see all of the clips from that card. So what I'm going to do now, and this is just sort of my uh, practice that I like to do, is what I'll do is I'll create one export timeline per card. And this is a way to keep the export timelines manageable because typically a card would maybe be 20 or 30 minutes worth of footage. So it keeps it to a nice, reasonable, manageable length that I can export one card at a time. It also makes it a lot easier to keep track of the cards that I've done, the cards that I haven't done, and generally just make sure that I keep everything organized. So I'm going to start by going to card one. And here are all my clips in card one. And I'm just going to kind of Apple A or Control A, select all the clips, and then right click anywhere and I get this menu and I'm going to say create new timeline using selected clips. So then it asks me about the timeline. It asks me for a start time code. Now in this case, the start time code for our timeline doesn't really matter very much because we're actually going to be exporting all of these clips individually using the built-in time code that was recorded, the start and end time code that was recorded. So the start time code of this sequence doesn't really make a difference, but as a kind of best practice, what I like to do is I like to create a start time code with the hour number that's based on the card number. So card one would start at one hour, card two would start at two hours, card three starts at three hours, and so on. Um, just because I like to be organized. So that's what I do. So we'll start, this is card one, so we'll start with um, one hour time code and then we'll give it a name. And again, I just like to name it something really obvious, day one, card one. Um, we just need the basic number of video and audio tracks because all we're going to do is we're just going to string out all of these clips in a row on the timeline. And I also like to deselect this option, use selected mark in and out, just in case I've accidentally created an in or an out point. I don't want to use that. I want to make sure that I use the entirety of every clip on the timeline. So I'm just going to uncheck that and I'm going to click create. What it's going to do now is it's created this timeline with the name that I've chosen and it's laid out all of the clips along the timeline. And so I can just scrub through. I can see all of the footage from this first video card for the short film that they shot. Um, and it all looks pretty good. I, as I scrub through, I'm not seeing any errors. I'm not seeing anything that looks unusual. I can also get an idea here of sort of whether or not the footage is going to require any additional processing? Is there going to be a LUT required or any kind of dailies color correction that we want to put on? In this case, the footage was shot in a way that doesn't require us to add a LUT, so I'm not going to be doing that. Um, but I might cover that in another video if you had footage that was shot in a RAW format or in a Log C format that you wanted to apply a basic LUT. Um, in order to get the colors looking kind of reasonable for your offline edit, you could do that down here um, using the color tab in Resolve. And this is where you would apply any kind of LUTs that were either provided to you by the production or some kind of standard LUT based on the camera profile that was used. Um, but we're not going to do that today and maybe I'll cover that in another video. So let's go back to the edit tab. So we've confirmed that this is all of this footage looks pretty good. Um, we have a timeline. In this case, it's about a half hour's worth of footage, which is one card. That seems about right. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create one timeline for each of the video cards for card two and card three, and then we'll move on to the next step. Another thing that I like to do is I like to keep my media pool organized. So rather than leaving my timelines in the same bin where the raw footage is, 
if you just right click you can add any new bins that you want and I'll often create a bin called timelines and I'll just actually put all of my timelines in there so that if I ever have to go back and re-export a timeline or part of a timeline I can see all of the timelines that I've done so far um, and all of the different video cards that I've got the footage for. Now one thing that I really like to do when I'm exporting dailies for Avid is I like to add a data burn-in onto my footage. So this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. And um, the only reason that I am able to do this is because I know that when my project is finished, when I've completed my edit in Avid Media Composer, I'm going to be matching back to the original footage and we're going to be up resing to high resolution in order to do a color correct and for finishing. So we're not actually going to be using these dailies that I'm making as our final final video. This is just an intermediate step for me to edit with. So for that reason I feel comfortable putting data burn in on. It also becomes a little bit of a backup plan just in case there's some sort of major disaster and a whole bunch of metadata gets lost somewhere in the process. It's very unlikely and it's never happened to me before but it could potentially happen that somehow we have a finished offline edit and no way to match back to the online footage and in that case it's really really helpful to actually have some data on the screen that's visible for people to look at that shows basic information like the source time code of the clip and the name of the clip that the footage originally came from. Over the course of a few versions Resolve has changed the location of the data burn-in menu but in this version, version 14, it's located under the workspace menu on data burn-in. So what it does is it pops up a little overlay and using this you can make decisions about what type of burn-in you want on your footage and I can just start checking stuff off and it will start putting it all over my footage. Then you can make choices about what font you want it to be, the size of the font, you can make the size of the font larger or smaller. You can, obviously, you can change the location of the burn-in. You can move it up or down. You can change the opacity. So it's really, really customizable. You can also save presets. So I've actually already saved a preset that I really like. I've called it Daily Small. I'm going to load it up here. And this is my preferred way of looking at data burn-in, which is super, super tiny, just kind of buried right at the bottom of the screen. And there's only a few pieces of information that you really need in order to make your burn-in useful. That's the source time code of the clip that you're playing, the real name of the clip, which we've created based on our previous video, and the actual name of the clip. And with those three pieces of information, you can pretty much always find the exact piece of footage that you're looking for. So that's all I put in my data burn-in. So I've loaded that up and that's now going to be on the entire timeline because I've done this under the project tab. You can also do it under the clip tab which just kind of applies the burn-in to that one clip but we're not interested in that. We want it to apply to everything. So this is the data burn-in for the whole project. So now we can close that and as you can see there's data burn-in on all of my footage on all of my timelines. So now that I have all of my timelines prepared, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the process of exporting the media and the clip metadata from Resolve for Avid Media Composer. And that will be in my next video.